This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, and today we have the good fortune of having Beverly on the uh, Vagabond Awake YouTube channel, and she's living in Mexico, and she's going to tell mm -hmm. us what it's like and what it costs and how long she's been there and all that sort of stuff, and welcome to the channel, Beverly. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. I am a lifelong fan. Uh, I was watching you before I even did this, so... Uh, it's a treat to be here. Thank you so much for your hard work. Well, thank you. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. So where in the world are you right now, Beverly? Oh, I am in beautiful Baja California, Sur, on the Pacific coast, uh, but I'm on the eastern side of uh, Baja, if you'll uh, forgive me, nearer the Sea of Cortez. Okay. And what city are you mm -hmm. in? I'm in La Paz, and it's just wonderful. Beautiful. Um, and so how long have you been there? And how long have you been in Mexico? Wow. OK. Well, I'll take the, the, the latter part first. I've been okay. in La Paz for about almost two months. Okay. Not quite two months yet. It'll be two months, December 1st. And um, I've been in Mexico, wow, a little over two years came uh, to Mexico like September of 2019. Okay, right before the mm -hmm. pandemic. <laughs> right before. <laughs> where, and where did you go first, if you don't mind? Uh, did you go to one oh, place or move around? Oh, that's a good or... question. Yeah. Excellent. So actually in August of 2019, I went to Guadalajara for 30 days, uh, thinking that I'll just come and take like this TEFL course so that when I retire <laughs> later, I can use this skill. But the problem was after 30 days, I did not want to go back to my job. So when I returned to the States, I returned with my letter of resignation. I was ready to come back to Mexico. <laughs> wow. And so, so the course that you took in uh, Guadalajara, is that an English course, English to teach English to people or? Yes. Uh, that you have to understand, Dan, that was my first time ever coming to Mexico. I did not know what to expect. Um, I did not know if I would be received. I was told it was dangerous. So I just took an opportunity to come for myself and see. I was at that time on the teacher vacation, right? So um, uh, in the meantime, I um, qualified and I registered for the course. They took care of all of my housing accommodations, tried to explain everything to expect. And um, from the first time I touched down, I thought this is an experience of a lifetime. And I just tried to absorb every moment of those 30 days. And by day 28, I had some decisions to make. And you see the result. <laughs> and so, so it sounds like maybe you were a teacher before you left the U.S. Is that right? Oh yes, okay. yes. I was a, a, a teacher, uh, educator, certified teacher in several states actually for over twenty years. But I was at a crossroad. Not yet retired. Not yet retired. But thinking, oh, there's got to be more to it than just being stressed out and living paycheck to paycheck. That was my existence in the states. Even though I made good money, I had no children. It was just me and my cat, right? But I really literally lived paycheck to paycheck after paying all my bills. Okay, so you're in Guadalajara. You got certified to teach um, English. Um, so what happened next? What happened next was I came to the States, took care, you know, trying to be responsible. Um, I was offered several jobs, one of them being in Chiapas. I'd never been to Chiapas. So I, you know, vacillated between should I go and take this interview or should I not? And then I knew I had maybe five days to kill after um, graduating this course. And I thought if I go back to the States and I don't at least go and entertain this new opportunity, then I'll kick myself later. So I just went. And again, I loved what I heard and what I saw. And immediately after the interview, it was time for me to come back to the States. So what happened was I took the job in Chavez. <laughs> I took the job, went back to the States. <laughs> You're laughing, right? Had it in my reservation. Everybody thought I was nuts, right, at the yeah, time, but respected my decision. 
Uh-huh. And I came back to chop us. In the meantime, um, the director of the course that I took in Guadalajara said, Beverly, I've been watching you. You love coffee. If you take the job in chop us, chop us is known for coffee. I was sold before I even got the interview. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. So I got a chance to use my newly developed skills plus my other skills of teaching. I was an asset to that program and just helped in any way I could, including teaching face-to-face children. And it was it was a wonderful experience, you know, to do that and learn some Spanish along the way. <laughs> wow, you can tell your excitement about um, that transition is clear. It just comes right oh, through. And, and thank those- you. You're welcome. <laughs> and for those that don't know, Chiapas is, is all the way down in the bottom of Mexico, almost into Guatemala. And it's in the high country. It's very green and beautiful. It rains a lot. Mm. It's one of the greenest parts of the Americas. And uh, it's it's strikingly beautiful. Um, it, does, it is a bit cold, though, isn't it? In the winter? Well, it, it, depending, like when I arrived uh, in September, from what I remember, it was beautiful, like you said, and green. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I noticed around October that it was starting to get a little nippy and you put a jacket on to go to work like early afternoon. Um, and then by mid afternoon, it's, you know, hot. But by that evening, it would turn cool to where you would need a coat and sometimes a hat, you know. Right. So and then by November, the rainy season, it would get down. Oh, you'll have to help me, Dan. Uh, maybe 42 degrees at night. And I think that's what, 20 degrees Celsius? I'm not sure. Right, right. Um, You'll have to help me. But my my audience will know you're 40 degrees, so they won't know the Celsius anyway. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. but it it would get down to about 40. And then uh, during the day, even in December, it might get up to 80 degrees, but it was the nighttime weather. It would get kind of cold at night. Right. And so... Uh, but you you are from a cold part of the U.S., is that right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, um, um, I, I lived uh, previously before coming to Mexico in Texas and then in Louisiana, so my blood has thinned out. I have okay. not lived in Chicago since my early 20s, uh, okay. so my blood is thin, and I could not take a lot of people said that how, how are you cold i'm like well you know i'm living here now so you do feel the cold and um uh, that was one thing that kind of shocked me being that low in mexico is that i was pleasantly surprised uh on one hand i enjoyed it because i was prepared for the cold but it's a surprise when you actually put on a winter coat yeah. in mexico <laughs> yeah, not everyone realizes because usually they go to Mexico for vacation, they're at the beach, but not everyone <laughs> realizes that there's these huge mountains right in the middle of Mexico from top north to south, and there's gorgeous yeah. colonial era cities, and, and, and Chiapas, mm-hmm. of course, is one of them, uh, mm-hmm. and so it is cool up there. And so, and then you, so you were there teaching until you moved to La Paz. And, yes, yes, I was uh, teaching there online during the pandemic. Um, I really enjoyed teaching online. I enjoyed um, helping the students who had a desire to learn. That was the other part. And um, uh, what happened was (laughs) I went on vacation again. These vacations always give me good ideas to uh, Playa del Carmen and to Loon and Mm -hmm. Cancun and thought, boy, life should be a beach. And that just got me thinking, well, you know, you might want to entertain that. And during research, I found this area. Um, Another reason why I thought La Paz would be good is because it's closer to family that lives in California in the States. Right, right. Kill two birds with one stone. Okay, great. So you're in La Paz. um, And um, so one of the things that my audience loves to hear about is what it costs to live in Mexico and what's life like in there, that sort of thing. So what kind of, what's your rent, your your electricity and that sort of thing? My rent, uh, it's it's actually double what, um, about two times what I paid in Chiapas, but um, the rent is very reasonable. I pay for a one bedroom apartment 450 US dollars. That is insane. I, I, I don't ever remember paying that in the States. And what do you even get? When I was is that like a one bedroom or what is it you're getting for that? This is a one bedroom. 
uh, with a, it's fully furnished, everything you would need uh, with a um, nice 35 inch television, um, the cable with some English channels so I can watch CNN or ABC or whatever are in English. Of course, the rest of it is in Spanish. Um, wonderful Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi here is fiber optic. I did not have that in Shoppers. And you know, I need that and rely on that for work. You're smiling. So I know you know what that is. <laughs> and um, I was not expecting it, but a washer and dryer is back in the back. Wow. Um, I did not have an oven. I had a stove in Chappas, but I have an oven as well. So for my Thanksgiving holiday, I actually made a turkey and I enjoyed that oven. And um, it's very, very convenient. Oh, and um, the electricity, I do pay for that, but uh, the propane to heat the stove and the shower is also included. Wow. And so how much is your electricity? The electricity is uh, is about, you know, in Mexico, you get your electric bill every other month. So my neighbor who was here before me told me that she pays about in the high season when you have to run air almost 24 or 7, about uh, $70 U.S. every two months. But during the low season, that's almost like $30 every two months. So uh, I, my average is about $25 every month which is about fifty dollars every two months wow that's great and you can't beat it and so your water your uh your propane so everything electricity is the only thing that you pay on top of your rent is that right the only Everything, thing, everything's included everything's included including the furniture wonderful and so what what about um what do you pay to get around town like do you, do you ride taxis and that kind of thing and um what does that cost well, I'm like you and King Ong. I like to walk. I'm 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 centrally located. Cheers, salute. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, <cheers. laughs> um, I'm centrally located, so to get anywhere is within one to two miles, and I love that. Right, because uh, because you get your exercise. But every now and then, I do need to take a taxi, like to get. If I want to go all the way out to Walmart or if I have too many groceries and yeah. I don't want to carry them back, you know, so you're looking at on the high end, if I go way, way up from oh, oh, far away, 150 pesos, which is about, oh gosh, a little over $7 round trip. You're looking at about $14 and okay. that's if I'm going far away, but the average is about 50 pesos, which is a little over $2 uh, okay. locally. If I go right up the street and then come back about $2, wow, uh, $4 if it's a round trip. You can't beat that. Great. So what, um, so, so what am I missing? What, what other expenses do you have? Like, um, I guess maybe, uh, do you go out to dinner? What do you average per month? Oh, you... yes. I, I figured that into my bill because I do like to take breaks daily. And I go to cafes. I'm noticing that. And when I lived in Chappas, I'll give you a comparison. The average was about 95 pesos, maybe 100, and you know about 120 pesos with the tip, which is about six dollars, five to six dollars. And that was for the average Mexican breakfast. Um, if you're doing dinner, maybe about seven, eight dollars, and that was for like you know two courses not including alcohol, but um, here the average is about uh, 150 pesos on the light end of breakfast, which is about $7 and um, going up to about $10 US, maybe 12 max. And I'm talking good food with your drink included and maybe even um, like an appetizer so, you know, here on the Malacan, I, I try to go for breakfast maybe twice a week, cafes, I like to attend. And then on the weekends, I do treat myself. I go to the marina and have like a hamburger or a full course meal. Um, and every now and then, but most of the time I drink coffee. I, I bring my um, wine home. I do like a little tequila, I've learned to appreciate that. But I bring that home when I buy it on sale. But, uh, uh, you know, $10 for a really good meal and good service, you can't beat that. Yeah, exactly. And so what about, what do you think you, what do you say, just guesstimate, do you spend per month on eating out in restaurants? 
Oh, about uh, 50 to $60. Because uh, if I do $10, uh, really going out once a week uh, for a really, really good meal. And then like my coffees, you know, I'm treating myself. That's about a dollar, dollar fifty. So any about 60 maybe $70. Uh, let's factor that in about $70 a month okay. to treat myself. Mm -hmm. and then and then what about um groceries what are you spending on groceries okay i'm i'm adding up here so okay oh okay groceries for me um uh, i try to buy locally like all of my fruits and vegetables locally you know and that's that's pretty cheap but if i have to stock up the refrigerator and, and buy uh the meats that i want and the vegetables looking at and it's just me about 200 dollars us for everything. And I only make a big trip like that once a month. Other than that, I'm buying locally, uh, going to the market and get what's fresh. And they, I love it here because people will recommend, they'll look at you and say, get this, this is fresh. And I always say, thank you. They'll always point out what I need to get that just came in fresh. So I really appreciate that. But about $200 for my groceries. Great. Um, and then let's see, what else are we thinking about here. So groceries, restaurants, mm -hmm. uh, rent, yeah. utilities. Um, what? So what would you guess? Oh, yeah, cell phone. What are you paying for your, your data or whatever? Dan, uh, this this happened by accident. I had a US cell phone that I was trying to hold on to right. and thought I needed it to do my videos. And that was over $130 a month. Wow. It actually went out on me. I couldn't believe it. In Mexico, no notice. The phone shut down, couldn't start it. And then it was a brand new phone. I had just made the device payment. I thought, oh, we're playing games. I went and got a Mexican phone. It does everything the other phone did. The package that I get is the Amiga plan, 300 a month, which is $15 internet, uh, texting, uh, Wi-Fi, the whole nine yards for $15. I said, I should have done this years ago. And instead of having a device payment, I paid $50 for my cell phone. And it's a smartphone outright, $50 outright. I, yeah, yeah. You can't beat it. So yeah, about $15 a month for my cell phone bill. Wow, that's amazing. And it's it's highway robbery in the U.S. for, <laughs> for I couldn't cell believe phones. it. I was <laughs> trying to hold on. And when, when that happened, I said, oh, there's some gangs going on. Let me move on very quickly. You know, yeah, it's one of the, yeah. the biggest savers, uh, cell phones. Um, so, so what do you like to do for fun in La Paz? Like what are, what are the things people like to do there for fun? Oh my goodness. Uh, like I said, well, uh, basically eating, but in the evening, La Paz is known as you probably know for its beautiful sunset. So when it's hot during the day and sticky, most people are in or go into a cafe and just soak up the air conditioning. But uh, at about sunset, everybody is usually on the Malacan with their family, just walking and watching the beautiful, colorful sunset, yeah. orange, purple and all that. And then you just do as the Romans do, right? So people are either uh, drinking something cool or sitting out having a beer and watching the sunset on the sea or eating ice cream and sitting on the beach or just talking with friends. So that's what I do in the evening is just take my evening walk, um, eat ice cream. I figure I'm walking it off, right? I hope, <laughs> you know. And then recently, uh, my landlord was gracious enough. Um, she's very active in the community. And there was at the local children's um, rehabilitation center, a fundraiser. And uh, she invited me and I said, but of course it's for a good cause. And I got a chance to practice my Spanish and dance, a little salsa dancing mm -hmm. and just have fun. And I learned how to play Loteria, you know, the little bingo game. Oh, so yeah. that was fun. But people here are just gracious. They walk up to you literally, how are you, where are you from? And when you leave, they say adios. So it's, it's just a different atmosphere. But uh, most people walk on the Malacan or go to Central or, and I always try, I'm always on the hunt, Dan, for a new cafe. So I've, I make it my business to say, oh, there's another one because I want to support the local businesses. I'm, I'm known, I love coffee. So when I, every time I take a break, I'm keeping my eyes open for a new cafe. <laughs> that's, that's great. And so 
Um, you're out on the Malacan in the evening, and that brings uh, an idea up. Uh, before you went to Mexico, people told you it's dangerous. You have to really worry about what. What is your personal experience of living in Mexico for two and a half years on that? I was so afraid the first time I actually came. I, I'm and, and the fear was all self-imposed from the media, right? Yeah. Um, I remember being at the airport, afraid out of my gourd. I I, I didn't even want to move. But by the time I made it through the airport and people were helping me with my limited Spanish, and then I arrived at the home that I preferred to stay in instead of an Airbnb so that I could absorb the culture, the woman was so welcoming. I didn't know, she didn't know me. I had never met her. We'd never spoken on the phone. And I was so spoiled the first week. This woman made breakfast and lunch and homemade dinner. She said, well, on the survey, it said, Do you like Mexican food? It got to the point where I had to beg her, please do not do the breakfast. I'm not used to eating that early. Are you sure? She would send me with bags and everybody, where did you get that? Where did, um, from my home, you know, the lady made it for me. She made that. I was so spoiled. We are still friends to this day. We send messages. She always tells me to stay safe, you know, keep in touch. It's just that, that fear lasted all of just maybe half a day. By the time I made it to her home, walked around, I realized that I had been, what do you call it, bamboozled? It was not like that. Um, now, on that note, even though I've never had a problem, knock on wood, I don't have a habit of walking around alone by myself at night. I didn't do that in the States. I'm from Chicago. So I trust my instincts. When I feel a certain way, I just walk the opposite direction. So, yeah, you know, it's a skill that I learned to trust as a child. If you feel a little, just move around. That's all. It's no course, problem. Of course. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. So overall, yeah. uh, safety hasn't been a big issue for you. It sounds like you're just using. Oh, uh, no, no, using, no, 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 no. You're just I, using I, wisdom. Wisdom and common sense. You know, don't flash cash. Keep your cell phone put away. I watch whatever the locals are doing, you know, and and then, of course, on the same time, keep your eyes open. Um, but even in Chappas, I never felt that I can't walk around here. Like I say, if anything, people are overly friendly and me being single, I have to be careful with that. But I don't feel that I have to stay away from people. I, I don't feel that at all. It's if if anything, I feel welcomed, and that's a good thing. But sometimes the fear is self-imposed. I have never had any. I've only had one instance where a lady might have been a little uh, suspicious, and that's because I I asked for the eggs wrong. She thought I said I need three eggs, and I misspoke. I I meant to ask her for thirty eggs, and when I've finally said it correctly. She just laughed <laughs> and said, and I said, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. You know, three eggs? Are you kidding? Right? <laughs> so other than that, I've, I've never had a problem. Thank God. Never that's, had a problem. That's great. So, um, so it sounds like um, one of the things I notice is that um, uh, Chiapas is one of the cheaper places in Mexico, it seems like. And, and beach towns uh, are a little more expensive. What would you say all in is for living in La Paz? You know, I know it's not down to the penny, but just roughly what you're spending per month. And then what would you say it is oh, in Chiapas compared to that? Yeah, in Chiapas, I know that my budget, I spent about uh, 750, but I always put it uh, above. So I would say 850, even though I knew that my budget was about 750. Here, it's the same thing. It's about a thousand uh, US, but I always add more to that just in case the electricity might go up or something might happen. So I would say $1,200 US, but it okay. is not that. My expenses come to about 900, uh, about 900 a month. That's great. Everything um, included. Now, one thing unique about you uh, that some people do that you're doing is that you're, is it, am I right? You're, you're teaching English online. And so you're just able to work from your home now while you're in Mexico. Is that right? Oh, I just, uh, this is my dream job. I, you know, I'm probably even after I retired about three years, but still want to do this because it's my way of giving back. Once a teacher, always a teacher. I don't feel that I'm working. This is this is my passion. So um, I get up in the morning. 
I used to do China, but I had to let that go because I'm an hour earlier coming uh, to the West Coast. But uh, I start in the morning. I still have a school that I teach for some students in Chiapas. And then I'm able to take a wonderful two hour luxury break, which is when I go to the cafe, have a breakfast or just have a coffee and enjoy the wonderful park. Then I come back home and I have adults in Chile that are learning English for their job. They work for American companies. Um, and then in the evenings, it varies. I do have some uh, adults in Guadalajara, a couple of conversation groups, and it's like welcoming them into my home. So I have breaks built during the day so that I'm not tired, but I am off on the weekends. So I just enjoy going out and exploring. On the weekends, I grab my keys and go explore and find another cafe or just hang out at the marina or go out for a nice dinner, you know. But um, I love what I do. And to be comfortable and have reliable internet is a plus. That's great. And so um, any advice for others? Like if you were doing it over again today, anything you would do different in your... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, if I had to do this over, because I just, I, I jumped, right? But looking back, I, I would have been serious about learning the language first. I'm doing this backwards, right? Um, if I knew that I was going to come here and, and, and start a life here, I would definitely have found a tutor um, and started taking my language seriously. And uh, probably I would have also been better at getting rid of things that I don't need because you know I sent some things to myself and looking back I wouldn't have done that I would have just broke even by finding a replacement for some things here mm -hmm. you know like I shipped my instant pot um, some school supplies why I don't know that was not necessary to do that <laughs> but see you know we hang on to things and then yeah. you find out I didn't need to do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh and I definitely would have, upon arrival, bought a Mexican phone. I, this is two years too late, in my opinion. All the money that I, I don't even want to think about the money that I wasted. Yeah, well, that's really great advice. Um, mm -hmm. So any any other tips for people that are thinking of this lifestyle? Yes. Like, what, what would you recommend that they do? Uh, you know, I watched one of your videos lately and I applaud you for giving people honest answers about the new changes in immigration. It's nothing to fear, right? For my case, I'm in the process of being hired by a new employee in Mexico, which are helping me to actually renew my work visa. Okay, and then you know after doing that four times, you can have the option of becoming a permanent citizen. Well. I used to carry my copies, color copies. I don't do that anymore. I carry my original documents with me very securely again, because if I get stopped, I want to prove this is me. This is how long I'm here. I am not trying to hide. I am not trying to be undocumented. I want to be undocumented. But right now, should something happen, I want them to see my documents. So that's my other tip is right. when you are visiting, whatever, however long you are here, have your documents on your person. It's very important. Um, well, your, your enthusiasm kind of answers my final question, but I, I'd like to <laughs> end with this to hear what people's thinking is on it. Um, are you happy? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Not only am I happy, I live well. I tell people I live on a budget and I live well. Okay, so uh, I'm happy because I didn't wait and I'm living my dream. I'm working from home. I, this was supposed to be four years down the line. Okay, so again, um, I wrote everything down. This is this was a dream. You know, even coming to La Paz was supposed to be next year. But because I watch and I stay intuitive, it happened even a little bit sooner, you know, because I was able to live on the budget and, and, and find that I could do it sooner. So I would tell everybody, write it down. Don't second guess yourself. And, and you know what? Don't, don't talk to people. Only look at people like Dan you know, that are already doing what you want to do. That's what gives me hope and excitement. So I followed you and a couple others and thought, wow, that would be nice. And before you know it, it happened for me as well. 
So that's my advice. Don't talk to anybody that's negative. Look at the people that are already doing what you want to do and then go for it. That's great advice. Well, thank you so much, Beverly. Uh, it's a joy to uh, see your face on the Zoom call finally and to Yay! hear your story. And, <laughs> and uh, do you um, do you have like a web page or anything that people could, could read or oh, learn yeah. about your story or what? what uh... Thank you. Yeah, you can hear about why I came to Mexico and how I took the TEFL on uh, my YouTube, Miles and Coffee. My name is not Miles but that's i travel miles and the coffee keeps me fueled so that's the name of the channel miles and coffee <laughs> okay miles and coffee uh well i'll put yeah, a link miles below so so people can find it more easily but uh <laughs> it's a joy to meet you and 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 yeah. you know send an email once in a while let us know how things are going and and uh we really appreciate uh, your time and it's nice to know you're out, yeah. in, out in the world enjoying yourself I have to say again, Dan, thank you so much. You are doing such a great service with all of your ebooks and your advice. And um, whenever I take one of your tips, you have been right dead on. So thank you for doing what you do and keep doing it. You're doing a great job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Beverly. Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.